Sometimes we can't drive 55. I get it. Sometimes we can't drive 25 through an intersection and then have to beg off a speeding ticket. I know, it just happened that one time. (laughs) Sometimes we have to go fast. And not just behind the wheel. In our design lives as well. But what if we need to go really fast? Like 112 gigabit per second PAM4. Yeah, that fast. What then? Well, we're gonna need to get serious. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Yes, we're talking about super speedy speeds today. But in order to get those rates, we're gonna need to talk about interconnects. My guest today is Matthew Burns from Samtech, and we're talking about the power of Samtech's flyover interconnect technology. The interconnect options for 112 gigabit per second PAM4 in your next system, and what kind of development kits will get you going fast. All right, let's get started. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about Samtech's 112 gigabit per second PAM4 interconnect portfolio. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amelia. It's great to be with you again. All right. So we're talking about going 112 gigabits per second PAM4 in five seconds. So, Matt, how exactly are we going to do that? (laughs) I hope it happens in just five seconds. (laughs) No, that's actually a really great way to broach the topic, right? When we talked about next generation high speeds a few years ago, the next gen cutting edge was 56G PAM4. Right. And for the most part, those folks in the data center applications are at those speeds. Yeah. So getting to 112 gigabit PAM4 is a whole nother design challenge. However, it's timely because the interconnect companies, Samtech included, have a number of 112G PAM4 interconnect available, and we're starting to see production silicon from the leading semiconductor players. You know, whether that's the FPGA guys or the timing guys, there's solutions available. So it's pertinent that we start talking about 112G PAM4. From a product standpoint, Samtech is a leader in that space in terms of the type of solutions that we offer. They break down into really three areas, front panel, mid-board, back plane. Some of the design challenges that we're confronting when it comes to front panel interconnect is there's a ton of popular MSA form factors. Yeah. So we've got some QSFP, QSF PDD solutions we'll talk about. We're looking at supporting 400 to 800 gigabit per second per port, especially on a front panel. There's always more speed, more power. You have to reduce thermal, right? Sure. Mid-board, we're looking at how do we get the connector as close as possible to the ASIC or the FPJ in the system? Yeah. How do we increase pin counts because transceivers continue to increase? What stack height is best for the application? And, you know, my right angle, my vertical, Am I am I an edge mount solution? Backplane, we also see increased density. However, what's interesting about backplane, we've talked about this in other chalk talks. We're starting to see some next gen architectures. Yeah. It's not just a right angle or vertical or coplanar. There's actually some cabled backplane solutions. Sure. That we're looking at, especially at, at higher data rates. And then backplanes. Most people think of backplanes always in a data center architecture, like in a rack mount solution. Yeah. But we're seeing, because of the density and because of the performance that, that's available there, backplane interconnect is being designed into test applications, ruggedized applications. And those are some areas that Samtech is looking at at 112 gigabit PAM4 data rates. So, Matt, in general, higher speeds mean shorter PCB length, right? Yeah. How is Samtech looking to solve this issue? That's a great question, Amelia. We've been talking about our flyover technology for years. And we were ahead of the curve on that in terms of the rest of the industry. The design paradigm of designing PCBs and routing a signal from point A to point B on a PCB, that's been there what seems like forever yeah. in our industry. Obviously, that's an exaggeration. However, as you mentioned, with data rates getting to 56 GPM4 and 112 GPM4, getting that signal to go 12 inches, 18 inches, half a meter, yeah, that really requires getting the signal out of the PCB into a cable assembly. Our flyover technology provides increased signal integrity enhancements over PCBs, and that really allows us to get that longer length. Our signal integrity experts have actually spent a lot of time looking at the effects of the carry frequency of the signal versus signal length within a particular medium. And what we found is, is that when you compare our ultra low skew twin X cable versus some standard Meg6 backplane PCB traces, at 28 gigahertz, which is the carrier frequency for 112 GPM4 signals, we have roughly a 15 dB delta in terms of performance. Wow. That 15 
16 dB really allows us to go those longer lengths. So, sure. so at these higher data rates, especially at 112 GPM4, we're really seeing the conversion from routing signals through the PCB, getting them into cables. Now, we're not saying that PCB design is going away. It's not. You always need the substrate. Right. But in a lot of applications, we're seeing that adoption of cable assemblies as the medium to go. Sure. So let's dig into the flyover technology a bit more. What kind of assembly options do I have? Well, where we really start at is at the front panel. Okay. And we mentioned earlier that in a lot of 1U, 19-inch rack mount assemblies that you'd find on a data center application, it's all about how much density can I get on the front panel. Right. The MSAs, the multi-source agreements are really driving that. Two of the most popular that we see are QSFP28 and QSFP28 double density. Okay. So we have our flyover QSFP28 and our double density flyover QSFP28 solutions where the cage conforms to the mechanical specifications of the MSA. So we still get the same density on the faceplate. However, by direct attaching our ultra low skew twin X flyover cables directly to the contacts within the cartridge connector of the MSA cages, we get rid of the noise that's associated with traditional architectures of sending that signal down to the PCB back up through a via and routing the signal out that way. So we're able to get longer distances we're able to get improved SI performance. And by using our FQSFP and FQSF PDD solutions on the front panel, we can route signals longer lengths within the chassis itself. Okay. So Matt, how do you route data from the front panel to the ASIC in a system like this? That's where the second connector on the cable assembly comes in. Okay. So we have many different technologies that we're looking at in terms of our mid-board N2 connector options on the cable assemblies to place those as close to the ASIC or FPGA or GP or whatever it is that you're using on your system. Yeah. Our highest performance connector solution, N2, is our Novaray family. This is a, an extreme high-speed, high-density cable. Novaray is able to support 56 GNRZ, 112 GPAM4 data rates. It offers industry-leading aggregate data density. It's twice the data rate and 60% of the space. That density and that performance performance is really opening up doors for us on next generation applications and we're, we're really excited about it. Currently Novaray can support anywhere between 8 to 32 signal pairs. The contact design mm-hmm. on Novaray has been optimized specifically for high speed differential pairs. Okay, so Matt is Novaray the only high-speed midboard option you have? No, Amelia. While Novaray is the highest performance solution that we have available, and it's great for applications that need to route dozens or hundreds of transceivers from the front panel to the midboard ASIC, in a number of applications, customers only need to route eight or 16 transceivers from the front panel to the midboard application. So, Our Accelerate family has been designed for such applications. Accelerate is a small and fast cable assembly. It has the industry's slimmest 7.6 millimeter body width, shortest length, and lowest profile cable assembly uh, on the industry. It really offers the best density in terms of differential pairs per square inch, and we've demonstrated 112 gigabit per second PAM4 performance in a variety of applications. Most customers are asking us for vertical launches Mm -hmm. with 8 and 16 pair, but we also have right angle interconnect available as well for customers that are interested in those type of applications as well. Okay, so what does the road look like going forward, Matt? With Novaray, we currently support between 8 and 32 differential pairs and leverage our 30 and 34 gauge ultra low skew twin X cable assembly. Coming down the road, we're looking to expand Novaray to route up to 72 differential pairs. We're also looking at developing a right angle version of Novaray, which will support data rates at 56 GNRZ and 112 GPAM4. For Novaray, we currently have 8 and 16 pairs available. We're looking at developing 24 pair interconnect. A lot of that's due to PCI Express. Sure, yeah. PCI Express doesn't necessarily need to work at 112 GPAM4, but the pin count and the density that Accelerate offers is really advantageous to those type of applications. Currently, right now, everything with Accelerate is differential. In the future, we're looking at providing some additional sidebands that will support some referential signals. Up to 10 singleted lines being routed over the cable assembly are available. And as we mentioned earlier, we're also looking at providing some right angle cable solutions with Accelerate as well. So you'll see more information on that as we move into 2020 and and the 2021. Okay, so it's obvious that Samtech is the market leader in 112 gigabits flyover, but what about board-to-board and mezzanine? As with the cable assemblies, our highest performance board-to-board connector or mezzanine connector is our Novaray Extreme Performance Extreme Density Arrays. These can support up to 4 terabit per second aggregate data rate using nine IEEE 400G channels. Another benefit of Novaray is that it has very low crosstalk in excess of 40 gigahertz. 
and it also is very tight impedance control. We mentioned during the cable session of the Chalk Talk that it has really good density. Nova Ray takes up 40% less space versus traditional rays, even though it passes the same amount of data rate. Yeah. We also have a variety of stack heights available, 7 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and we can get up to 112 differential pairs per square inch using this contact system. It also offers another point of interest for your listeners is that Nova Ray is also very rugged. There's two points of contact, which ensures a more reliable connection, especially when connectors may be jostling in a rugged shock and vibe application. Yeah. And as we mentioned earlier, there's also cable mates available are our Nova Ray cable solutions. Another mezzanine solution that we also have operating at 112 GPAM4 is our Accelerate HP High Performance Array. This leverages the benefits that we've learned with C-Ray using open pin field connect system. Okay. What that means is that any one pin can be a differential pair signal, a referential pair signal, or deliver power or current from one board to the other. Open pin field interconnect systems also tend to be more flexible. They can be cost optimized and we can get a little bit better density gotcha. versus Nova Ray. With Accelerate HP, we currently have two stack heights, five millimeter and 10 millimeter. We have a four row design, which supports a four by 100 configuration or 400 total pins. And we've seen Accelerate HD, our APM6, APF6 family support, PCI Express Gen 5, and 100 gigabit Ethernet applications. We do not have an Accelerate HP cable assembly yet, but we are working on that as we speak. Cool. Okay. So what does the future hold for Nova Ray and Accelerate? Where is SamTech headed from here? Currently, with the NVAM and NVAF series, we can support a total aggregate bandwidth of 1,792 gigabits per second. We can support one and two banks with two, four, or six rows of pins, which gives us support up to 32 pair. What we're working on with the roadmap is to extend that to support up to four terabits per second aggregate through a single connector. We'll accomplish that by providing a three bank by six row NVAM NVF pair, which will support up to 72 differential pairs. What we're also looking to is to expand the Nova Ray family with mixed power and single ended pins that are added. We're also continuing to expand the stack heights. We'll have seven millimeter, 10 millimeter, and 12 millimeter. And depending upon the interest we get from our customers, we'll continue to expand from there. With the Accelerate HP family, the APM6, APF6, currently we have four row, 20 pin, 100 pin interconnect, which gives us up to 400 pins. We currently have a five millimeter stack height. Going forward, we'll have 400 pins and a 10 millimeter stack height, as well as support for PCI Gen 5 and 100 gigabit ethernet. Something else that we're working on with Accelerate HP is increased pin count options. We have more than a few customers asking us for mezzanine connectors with seven, eight, nine hundred, a thousand pin contacts within a single connector body. So our answer for that is to continue to expand Accelerate HP as we move into later in 2020 and early into 2021. Okay. So Matt, one thing we haven't touched upon yet is backplane cable assemblies. So what does that look like for 112 gigabit per second? The same flyover technology that continues to find homes in server applications on the shelf is also finding applications on the backplane. Sure. As we've shown with the twin X flyover technology, we can send larger amounts of data over longer lengths. We've actually demonstrated sending 112 gigabit per second PAM4 data rates over three meter long EBCM cable assemblies. So that performance is really forcing the data center OEMs to rethink the type of system architectures that they're designing their systems in. Our XMAX backplane cable assemblies can support both our 30 and 34 gauge high speed ultra low twin X cable. These solutions are highly customizable, not only from a connector standpoint, but also from a cable length standpoint. By getting the high performance signals into the cable, we can actually decrease the amount of layers oh, yeah. that are used on backplane PCBs. And OEMs can start to look at less exotic substrates which will lower their system costs. Sure. XMAX has two reliable points of contact. It conforms to several standards typically found in data center applications. We can support four and six pair and six, eight, 10, and 12 column applications. And we also offer cable to direct mate orthogonal options as well. Some of the most interest that SamTech is getting in, in backplane applications is actually cabled backplane assemblies. Sure. And we expect interest in that to continue to increase as 112 gigabit PAM4 data demands grow within the industry. All right, Matt. So. How do I get started? More and more customers are expecting some sort of hardware platform Absolutely. that they can test our 112 GPAM4 interconnect with to validate the results that we've seen. So we offer a growing number of evaluation development kits. We have SI evaluation kits for board-to-board -board applications such as Nova Ray and Accelerate. We have SI evaluation for cable assemblies for Nova Ray, Accelerate, XMAX, and other interconnect solutions we have. We have general component kits, and we have a number of optics and FPGA kits available as well. 
All right, Matt, so where should I go for more information? SAMTEC has recently released our roadmap information in a new piece of literature, which is available on our website at the link below, Amelia. Great. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me yet again, Matt. Thanks, Amelia. It's always a privilege to spend time with you. Before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about Samtech's 112 gigabit per second PAM4 interconnect portfolio. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash EE Journal.